All right, everybody. It's been a week since we last visited, visited, excuse me, regarding updates on Camper 8.0. So let's get into what I've done in the last week. So starting here from the front, uh, I now have these solar panels officially mounted. And there's a little bit of dust up there, so don't mind that. Uh, these were the uh, Bouge RV, they call them the SIG panels, C-I-G-S. I don't remember what it stands for, but they use, uh, it's a proprietary method they use. Uh, about a year ago, I reviewed um, one of the panels and I was actually quite impressed. So I went ahead and bought another two and uh, I chose to use the flexible panels for obvious reasons is because I wanted to maintain the shape of this roof. Um, these particular panels are the uh, long version. Um, and as you guys will see, they extend almost all the way to the back and they have the uh, stick em tape on the back of them. And um, a friend of mine came and we laid them out and I was pretty happy with how they turned out. And uh, they're each 100 watts. So there's a, a, at least a theoretical 300 watt capacity on this roof. And as you guys could see on the sides that if I ever did want to, I could add another two pan or another you know one panel on each side for an additional two. Uh, if you look at the Amazon reviews of these panels, um, overall, they're very positive. The one negative though, was some people had reported that the adhesive had failed. So what I did is I have uh, some white Eternabon tape. If you guys are familiar, you know that's some pretty strong stuff. So I actually just put one layer right across this leading edge uh, just to kind of give a little bit of extra security. All right. So most of all the work because the outside is officially done. Uh, well, we'll roll inside in one minute. Um, so this is the backside of the panels. Now, I don't have them hooked up yet. Um, but... Uh, what you can see here is a, uh, I don't know what you call these, but this is a device that allows you to feed the solar cable inside and produce a waterproof uh, 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 mechanism there. So I put this in place. I just have my pigtails out and uh, I'll wire up these panels a little bit later. Uh, but as you guys can see, uh, they do slightly come past the, uh, the uh, bend on the roof here. I haven't had an opportunity to slide the camper out and get a real full test. Um, though I have taken the panels individually and kind of tried to mimic the curve the best I could and take some measurements. And surprisingly, they, uh, the, the curve there doesn't seem to really affect it in the sense that, you know, you're changing the angle of how the sun's hitting it. So, but uh, ultimately, um, you know, we'll see here in the new future uh, how they perform. But I, I'm overall pretty confident. What I am going to do, though is uh, I haven't figured out how I'm going to wire it, but I'm going to have a little lead come out here to where if I wanted to hook up a, an external set of foldable panels, say if I'm, you know, set up at a dedicated campsite, uh, I could also do that. So, but I have not figured out that wiring yet. Okay, so let's move on the inside here. Go back to wide angle. Okay, so first thing I did is... Um, as you guys recall, I had coated all of the internal wood with poly, and then I coated the floor. Uh, actually, my son helped me. We put a bunch of coats of poly on the floor. Um, that's uh, just to protect it if there's any, uh, you know, any spills or moisture. Uh, this is not fixed in sight, but this is the vinyl planking that's going to occupy uh, this hallway section. I guess you call it. I'm not sure you'd call it. The if you look. Right there, you'll see that there's a cedar board that runs all the way between those little columns there. Uh, that inside part, um, I put in poly too, but that's not going to have this um, planking in there. Uh, keep in mind that this, this will be the bed surface, all of this up here. So that will largely not be visible. Um, but it is polyurethane if there is any moisture that gets in there, which I don't foresee uh, that being an issue. Um, oh! over here now it's obviously not completely framed in but uh so i kind of figured out my organization for under the bed so this section right here is going to be where the uh, toilet goes a little chemical toilet or cassette toilet i think is another term people use for it so it is going to be walled off and then i will have a door and that is to kind of keep a seal um, i've largely been pretty happy with those without any smells but just in the off chance uh, there is some, I want it sealed off. And then um, I went ahead and put it in this spot with this door back here that will allow me to access the turnbuckles in front. 
Obviously, if I access them, I could pull everything out and just kind of squirt my butt or squish my body back in there. But if there ever was a big smell issue, if it was like, uh, you know, the heat of the summer or something, I could crack that door to kind of vent it out to the outside. Um, okay, so as the title suggested, um, most of what I got done was I got all the electrical done. So um, I'm going to talk about the power bank in a second, but the power bank is going to sit in this little cavity. And this cavity is going to be open. Uh, so that's where the refrigerator is going to sit, but I'm going to have a, a pretty substantial amount of additional space. So that will just be generic storage down there. Um, I think I've resolved that I'm going to use that set power fridge. It's kind of the tall, narrow one, and that will probably mostly just kind of occupy this area. So I'll have a pretty notable big space here to, to put stuff if I wanted to. So, all right, let's roll into the electrical stuff. Now, one caveat I want to give right away, right up front, is uh, my purpose is not instructional in terms of how to do the electrical in your camper. This is just, you know, a vlog like we've talked about before. You guys can just kind of follow along and see where my progress is going. You know, I will talk about kind of the design of where I'm putting different electrical components, but if you want to uh, uh, do your own electrical system, particularly if you're not familiar with how to do that, there's many free sources on YouTube and other places uh, to get that information. Uh, two offhand, which are YouTube channels and they have corresponding websites, is Will Prowse, that's P-R-O-W-S-E, and Explorist Life. Uh, I found both those channels are very, very good. Um, I think they both offer a lot of wiring diagrams and detailed instructions. So I'm going to lay out kind of where I'm going with my electrical system. But again, my purpose is not instructional in the sense that you could watch this and then walk away and do your own. So uh, another caveat is I will use the term AC and DC. Most of you probably are familiar with that is, but if you're not, uh, DC stands for direct current, AC stands for alternating current, alternating current which in your house, uh, the AC unit, or I'm confusing it here, the air conditioner unit runs off of AC. But pretty much other than that, everything in the camper in here um, is going to run off of direct current. And direct current is, for a small space like this, typically the most efficient method. So let's roll into that. So just those caveats aside. Okay, so right down here, uh, one other caveat I want to say is if you do your own electrical, make sure you understand exactly what you're doing or give it to the professionals. And the reason why is that there is huge fire risks, particularly if you're you know, working with a wood structure like this, if you ever were to have a short. So, um, okay, last caveat. So as I've done with a lot of my other campers in the past, I'm going to use a power bank as the main battery supply. Plus it also has the solar charge controller for the input of the solar and an inverter so I can run the um, air conditioner. Now, the placement of this in this corner was really just for practicality. The cord for the air conditioner is right there. And, um, uh, you know, usually you shut these off if you're not in use. Otherwise, they typically have a residual drain. So I wanted it adjacent to the front door. So if I were to come in, I can easily turn it on if I had to, say, for example, if I hadn't been in here a while. I'm also going to put an angled piece right here, which will house all the various switches. And again, that's... Uh, a value to be immediately accessible to by the front door. And one thing you have to consider on these truck campers is because they sit pretty high in the bed of the truck, you want your switches typically low. So if you're standing outside your truck, they're pretty easy to access. But simultaneous that if you're inside, it's not that big of a deal to reach down there. So the, the heart of where I started with this electrical system was right here, which is my fuse box. I have the cover off right now. Um, and the fuse box is very important. Um, I think we all familiar with the fuses are, but they're essentially a, a built-in failure mechanism if your circuit ever um, exceeds a particular amperage. And that's important to protect the circuit, to prevent fires and damage to your circuit. Uh, so I always just put in place that fuse box and start wiring everything off of that. Um, this jumble of wires you see down here looks like a mess, but this is a... Uh, 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 extra leads for things that will have uh, switches, which will go right in this section here. And right now, I just have them uh, zip tied up until I get to the point where I'm doing some of the finishing and doing the final install of the switches. But what we have down here is we have a dimmer switch right here for the lights. 
And then right down here, this is called a speed controller. Let me zoom in right here. This is called a speed controller, okay? Now I have this wired in. This is a little unusual, but I have this wired in to my vent fan, okay? Um, I talked about this vent fan. I kind of took a chance on it uh, because the other eight inch vent fans is pretty much almost dominated by the Max Air brand. And I wasn't, I've used those in a couple other applications and I'm not super happy with them. This was kind of like a no-name brand one I got on Amazon. If I think about it, I'll, I'll try to add the link in this video. Uh, but I'm really happy with it. Um, now, one thing, it didn't have a switch. The Max Air ones had kind of a, a switch up here. This one did not. And in the reviews for this, somebody had talked about using a speed controller. That way, what that does is you, it's kind of like a dimmer switch on lights. Is you can you could twist the controller and it will change the variability of the speed of the fan. And so I bought one of those speed controllers, which you have to use on, on DC motors, or at least that's my understanding. Uh, it works really well and allows me to, to regulate the speed. Now, as I talked, I had some concerns about if that fan would pull enough CFMs. Um, and uh, it, it certainly is not pulling as much as like a, a big, you know, 14 inch rooftop fan. But I did shut all the windows and the door and just open up this back window down here and uh, turned it on. And it produced a sufficient breeze in here. So I think it's going to be fine. It's not great, uh, but it will be it, it will be sufficient. Uh, but like I talked about before, I didn't want to put a rooftop vent fan on the roof because I didn't want to disrupt the uh, aerodynamics. And uh, so this was the best compromise, but it's quiet. Uh, it's efficient in terms of energy use, and I think it will be fine. All right. So up here, you guys can see the little lead for the outside light, which is right here. Sorry about that, it's a little tight of a thing. So I got that wire running down into here, and that will also have a switch down here. Um, now I put, let's take a look on the outside here. I put um, some external uh, running slash brake lights back here. Now these function off an entirely different circuit. So they have no tie to the circuit inside the camper. And all of those are wired up and I have all the leads loose down there. I'll connect a four pin connector to those later. And what that, what will do, what that, I'm sorry, I can't talk. What I will do is when I mount this in the truck, I will just simply plug that four pin connector into my trailer, into what would be the trailer connector. And then these will be fused and powered via the electrical system in the truck. But the nice thing is they'll function as running lights and additional brake lights. So it's for a little bit of extra safety. On this camper, I opted not to put any other running lights because it's, uh, it's going to be a pretty small camper. And I just didn't want to put any extra holes in the uh, side of the body. So, um, okay. So I'll give you guys a little lesson on safety here. So the lights, uh, these are just three flush mount LED lights. I highly recommend that you use LED because they're more efficient and they're very inexpensive. Now, some people have LED lights that have individual switches on them. For a small space like this, I prefer to wire them all together. And you guys saw that dimmer switch. So they, when you turn them on, it lights up the entire area. This is a pretty small area. Um, and then, of course, you could dim them if you wanted a little bit less. Right now, they're just held in place temporarily uh, because you know I want some light in here while I'm working. Okay, um, and then this series of wires comes and loops all the way around here and comes to this section. It has two rolls. One, and this light is just in there temporarily for test purposes, but remember there's going to be a cabinet right here, and when that cabinet opens up, I want to have a light inside, so that's for that. And then you can't see it, but up underneath here, you can hear it probably, I have a light that's connected back behind this wall, and that is to illuminate this storage area back here, okay? As you guys recall, just visualize this. Uh, there's going to be, uh, this is all going to be closed off, and there will be a pull-off door right here. Uh, so when this is completed and you look at this, you won't see the black back there. It'll just be a, a finished door. Um, but I wanted a light in there. And then as you guys can see, I have uh, lined the inside of this, both the roof and the bottom and the sides, with the thin insulation. Uh, may not be super pretty, but it's going to be a storage area, and uh, that'll work out nice, real nice to give some insulation in there, plus a little bit of cushioning for whatever items that you have inside of there. 
And uh, and then I, the second wire comes in. Now it's not hooked up because it, I'll hook it up once I get the cabinets in place. But uh, um, I will put a one of those multi USB style things inside the cabinet, or maybe just on the outside. I haven't made up my mind for charging your phones, etc. Now this is a good lesson for safety. So you have to calibrate the size of your wire for the amount of amperage that's going to be drawn through that wire. And they have what are called wire size calculators. They're completely free on the internet. Just Google, Google it, DC wire size calculator. It's going to pop up. You don't need to download an app and you only really have to enter two pieces of data. And that is the run. That is the length that the wire runs. Now the front the to and from is important, but those calculators will automatically ca uh, double the number. So you basically just have to calculate the total feet or whatever cal uh, whatever measurements you're using that this wire runs. And then it will ask the estimated uh, amperage pull through that. And if you buy, say, for example, that USB thing off of Amazon, almost inevitably they're going to describe how many watts it could pull at max. And then that will give you the wire size. So... When I initially wired this up, I knew I wanted the USB, but I also wanted, knew I wanted the lights. And my initial anticipation was that one wire would be enough. And then when I did the calculations, I realized that I would need to add a second wire. So I essentially just created two switches, one that will function the USB and one that will function the lights. So that's a great example of the importance of using, you know, making sure that you're doing all the calculations because you want to make sure that you don't overburden these wires because it could generate a lot of heat and uh, also cause some problems in extreme cases with the functionality of things. The final thing I want to talk about is the use of the power bank to power these. Uh, I, meant, I talked about it a little bit briefly, and I meant to go on uh, a little bit longer discussion, but I got on a tangent, I believe. Um, these have some pros and cons. Uh, the cons are uh, the DC output, which again, remember, is what is running most of these appliances in here, is somewhat limited to about 120, 130 watts. Um, now, that's sufficient for a camper of this size, but say for something like the van, uh, that might not be enough. Um, and, you know, they can they can be expensive and you're kind of stuck with whatever uh, specifications in terms of your solar charge controller size and inverter and stuff like that. I found these bigger units, which are about 2,000 watt hours. Uh, for a little camper like this, though, they're typically uh, totally sufficient. The pros, though, is they're easy. You don't have to wire together your own system and buy all the individual components. They're clean looking. You know, it's just a single unit. And being out here in the desert, it's pretty hard on these in the heat. So if I'm not using the camper, I'll commonly just remove these from the camper unless I use it. And this one even has handles and a wheel, so it's really easy to remove. So, guys, I've rambled on long enough, but this is it in a nutshell. I uh, hope everyone's doing well, and uh, let me know what you think. The next video, uh, we should start seeing um, uh, some more of the interior looking finished. And uh, it's gotten hot here in Vegas. So I hope I can finish this up soon. So thanks, guys, for watching.